Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. You are tuned into another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the podcast for traditional martial artists. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, joined by co host Andrew Adams. We've got a fun episode today. It's another word association. You all seem to like these. Everyone loves trying to stump me, but I am unstumpable. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. If you're new to the show, you might want to head on over to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Check out the podcast website. Check out all the episodes we've ever done. If you like this, we've got four others that you can check out. If you don't like this, well, we've got a bunch of other episodes from guest interviews we, we release every Monday to a variety of topics and conversations that come out on Thursdays. Usually it's Andrew and I, but sometimes mm -hmm. we have other people or we do some other things and we have a lot of fun with this show. We've been doing this for eight years now. And over 800 episodes, over 800 episodes, they're all available to you for free. And if you appreciate that, if you want to do something to support that, here are the big three. We have a Patreon it starts at two dollars a month, gets you access to behind the scenes and at higher tiers. We also send you merch like stickers and hats and other cool stuff, give you additional content that you're not going to find anywhere else. You can also buy something on the store at whistlekick.com using the code podcast15. Or you can check out the family page. If you've been around for a while, you are part of our family. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> you are part of this family. We've adopted you. Yes, you have You have no say in the matter. And if you go to the website, whistlekick.com slash family, yeah, you've got to type it in. We intentionally don't like it. We've got two sets of things over there. One, it's all the things you can do to help us out. Direct links to leaving reviews and stuff like that. Two, bonus material. It's often my thoughts or pictures it's discount codes. It's a bunch of stuff that you're not going to find literally anywhere else. It is completely exclusive. And that's a thank you for those of you who are willing to check it out. I update it weekly. Okay. Now, I mentioned whistlekick.com. That's our online home. You're going to find all the stuff that we're involved in because whistlekick is a lot more than this show. We do a ton of things. We have events. We uh, support Marshall Journal. We, what else do we do? We offer consulting. There's a ton of things around what we are. And if you check out whistlekick.com, you're going to find all of them. Sign up for the newsletter so you get notified. We've got an email going out later today about a big milestone for us. By the time you've heard this, we let everybody know, hey, episode 800 is coming, and here's everything you need to know. We, we're we not going to spam you. We're not going to go too crazy about that. And uh, I think that's it yeah. for an intro. That's a good intro. Sounds good. All right, word association. And you want to tell them how this works? So I have a list of words. When I when we do this on Zoom, I can hold it up to the camera, but I just have it on my phone. I don't think you'd see it really well. But I have a list of words here that Jeremy has not seen. They are random words. Random. Random. Uh, and his job is to try and, in a concise way as possible, not I'm not going to say quick, like I'm not putting a time limit on it, but relate the word that, that I'm giving you somehow related to martial arts in a way that makes sense. It's got to make sense? Crap. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So that's how it works. Are you ready for your first word? I'm ready. I've got nine words today. Nine words. Let's okay. do it. First word, dog food. <laughs> what is dog food? Dog food is the stuff we put in a bowl and we give it to the dog and they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Dog food is another way of saying indoctrination. You are fed the dog food. You're eating the dog food. You are just, it is put in your face. And because you have nothing better, you will consume it. A lot of martial arts schools, that is how they teach. You, there's no asking why. There's no cross training. There's no experimentation. There's no ability to better. Uh, in fact, it's some, the, there isn't even the opportunity to ask for clarification. If you don't understand the way it is being presented, you are expected to just go along and parrot and repeat until hopefully you do. It's dog food. Hmm. Now, well, over the last few years, there have been advancements in what dogs are asked to eat. Cause let's remember most of what we put in dog food is not actually food for dogs. Yeah. That's quite well documented. Uh, dog food shouldn't probably shouldn't be crunchy. Probably shouldn't have potatoes in it or rice. Just putting that out there. We can historically think about dog food as just, it's just kind of there and the dogs eat it because they don't know better. But just as we have better dog food available now, we also have better information available now. And 
if you are at a school that teaches in this way, you do have a choice. And if you're watching or listening to this show, that's probably part of what you get out of this show is the recognition that there are other ways to think of things, that it is not a one size fits all as with dog food. Easter eggs. I wish I had a, well, I guess I could use the term application if we think of bunkai or oyo as Japanese terms. That's what the application is in forms. <clears throat> as you get better learning forms and unpacking what they are doing, you know, you go through your first, you know, pinyon hand, taikyoko, um, chongji, you know, low block punch. Oh, I'm blocking a kick and I'm punching. Maybe you are. And that could be the first level of, what the application is. But if you've been training a while, you know that there's so many more layers and levels to that, just as what is an Easter egg? It's something that is hidden. It's something that you find. Mm -hmm. It's something that you find value in, and it is of more value because you had to discover it, just as the application informs are. Yarn. Hmm, which way do I want to go with this? Okay. Yarn is a kind of a base material. We use it to make things. We can make a blanket out of yarn. Mm -hmm. We can make a sweater out of yarn. We can make just about anything of any size out of the same yarn. If I get enough yarn, if the skein, 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 mm -hmm. skein. skein of yarn is big enough, I can make anything, right? I could make a 100-foot blanket if I wanted to. Maybe, maybe more correctly, an afghan. Wouldn't that be a scarf, really? A hundred foot. <laughs> be a very large scarf. Like Doctor Who. Did you ever watch Doctor Who? Oh, the fourth Doctor is the best. He wore the old, he's Tom Baker, he wore the long scarf. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. You could say the same about some of our most basic movements. You know, you can make a lot of things into a blanket or a scarf or a sweater, right? You can use varieties of yarn, you can use leather, you can use polyester, but there really only are only a handful. Mm -hmm. I could take um, plastic, there are companies doing this, I can take plastic water bottles, I can uh, break them down, I can create a fiber out of them and I can make something, still polyester. Mm -hmm. Polyester is really plastic, right? Polyester, right? It's plastic. Our martial arts repertoire seems really broad. It's not. Most of what we throw is a variant of a kick to the front, a kick to the side, kick to the back. What's a crescent kick? It's a front kick that has some hip movement. What's an axe kick? Axe kick. It's a front kick that has some hip movement. What's a side kick? What's a round kick, roundhouse kick? Sloppy sidekick. What's a hook kick? Sloppy sidekick. Sloppy sidekick. It's a, one of Bill Wallace's favorite things, right? To say. Um, I think often we are so focused on the end result and the variability of the end result that we forget the elegance of the input. And that as we spend more time crafting different yarn, we can dramatically impact the output, the sweater, the whatever it is. Candle. Hmm. When is a candle most valuable? When it's dark out. The value of a candle increases as the darkness increases. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. right now, we could have a candle on this stool that we use as a table, and it might provide some nice ambiance. I was expecting it. You looked like you were going to say something. Some nice ambiance. <laughs> As it gets dark later today, that same candle would provide some illumination. But if it's completely pitch black and there's nothing else, like when the power goes out here, seemingly frequently, that same candle is quite valuable. And if I didn't have flashlights, it'd be even more valuable. Mm -hmm. Right? The same candle in a different context goes from kind of nice to potentially life-saving. 
And we can say the same thing about our training. When I train in a martial arts school, I'm having fun. It's mm -hmm. nice. I'm enjoying myself. I'm learning. Great. But if someone's trying to take my life, that very same movement that I've been that I was doing for fun or for education or in competition could now protect my life. Mm -hmm. And that context is everything. Fish tanks. One of my favorite sayings mm -hmm. is that people are like goldfish. They grow to the size of the tank that they're in. And I think one of the major disservices that we do in modern society is that we have for safety and for, for uh, a lot of positive reasons, artificially restricted the growth of people. I don't think it happens as much in martial arts, but it does happen in martial arts and it happens everywhere where we give people all this safety, all these boundaries, and they don't grow very big. That same goldfish that you drop in your fish tank gets huge when you put it in a backyard pond. And in fact, there are plenty of examples. You can find videos on YouTube of people catching goldfish that were released into lakes and somehow grew large enough that they were no longer, you know, like little guppies. And mm. now you've got these, <clears throat> these goldfish that you're like, this thing is huge and weird and kind of fugly looking. People are the same way and martial arts are the same way. If you expect these hard line boundaries or worse, if you're an instructor that draws these hard line boundaries and won't share information with people that you know are ready, you're restricting their growth. And it's really a shame. You end up with smaller, figuratively smaller students, smaller people mm -hmm. than you would have otherwise. And I think that that's a shame. Wine cork. A wine cork is a barrier. Mm -hmm. It prevents you from getting to the good stuff. <laughs> right? Nobody's buying wine for the bottle and the cork. They're buying it for the contents. And you could draw an analogy. It's, it's a weak one, but I'm going to make it because it's the best I've got. You could draw that analogy to various styles of martial arts. I prefer this kind of wine or that kind of wine. I prefer this kind of martial art or this martial art. And they all have a bottle. Some bottles are really fancy. And quite often the wine inside doesn't live up to the fanciness of the bottle. It might be a very simple label on the bottle. And if you properly decant the wine, if, if it's a red and you know, drink that wine at the right time, maybe with the right meal or the right people. It's, it's an absolutely amazing, maybe even life-changing experience. The cork is a very simple thing. It's the simplest part, right? Like mm -hmm. a cork, it's, it's just a chunk of wood. And while not all corks are actually made of cork now, mm -hmm. historically yeah. they were, it's a very simple thing. But what happens without that simple thing? You can't do anything. The wine falls out, right? Yeah. Like, or it spoils. Both, mm -hmm. right? Bugs will get in there. It's just, it's not a good scene. So what is the cork in the context of martial arts? It is almost in contrast to the last comment I made. It, it can be the artificial restriction of information. Because if you take it all at once, it's too much. Why don't we, most of us, Drink our wine straight from the bottle because <laughs> it's too much at once. We pour it into a glass. Maybe we pour some and we put a, a stopper in it, which is essentially a, cork. a replacement cork. Mm -hmm. And it goes back in the fridge or back on the counter. And we have another glass tomorrow because we recognize that, yes, we really enjoy wine, but having it all at once might be a little bit too much. I might wake up tomorrow not feeling well about how much I took. Just because you can train 6, 8, 12 hours a day doesn't mean that that's what's best for you. Maybe you need to train a, an hour or two a day instead of 12 hours in one day. Grill tongs. Mm. To keep you from getting burned. They're a way for you to safely 
push something past your limits. I think that's why we like movies, martial arts movies. Hmm. Most of us don't want to get into those fights. I mean, you don't like martial arts movies. Just the bad ones. <laughs> but I think it's commonplace enough that martial artists watch movies, martial arts movies, and, and critique the fight scenes from a place of, of correct or incorrect experience. Mm -hmm. Because we're putting ourselves in the place of those movies, right? Oh, that, I can't believe he, that's a great tech. Oh, that makes it, oh, I'm going to try that, right? Or, oh, that would never work. Uh, I can't believe they did that. The choreography here is stupid, right? Whatever it is. It's a way for us to feel like we're part of that without interacting with it. Mm -hmm. Grill tongs are sort of the same. You grill something, you get it hotter than you could personally handle, just like the fight scene in the movie, and then it cools back off, and now you can eat it. All right. I dig it. It's the weakest one yet. I, yeah, will, I fully acknowledge. Uh, ceiling fan. <laughs> you just walked around your basement. I don't have a ceiling fan in my house. No. Like, I thought of this. I, I, I forgot that you have. We I can look up. We can both look There's up and ceiling fan see right a ceiling there. fan. It had yeah. nothing to do with. That was on my list before I got here. Ceiling fan. Ceiling fans are efficient ways of moving air. Where does that take me? Now you're getting behind the scenes of Jeremy's brain. <laughs> They move air. They create movement. They are simpler. They work because they're simple. I don't know how long ceiling fans have been around. Probably shortly after electricity. Probably long before air conditioning. Perhaps, yeah. Maybe not ceiling fans, but fans in general. Mm -hmm. They really haven't changed. There's an angle bl angled blade. Mm -hmm. The number of blades can change. I've seen as few as two. Those ones weird me out. Most of them seem to have four or five. They come in all sizes. But they do a really important job. They help circulate air. I have a ceiling fan there next to the wood stove that runs most of the year. Because otherwise, the air in the house gets a little stale. Mm -hmm. And I like having that air circulated. In martial arts, we have a lot of things that are very simple that have not changed very much that are incredibly effective and provide much more utility than I think we recognize. A, a simple punch. Punch, reverse punch, cross, wh whatever, whatever you would call it. It's a punch. It's pretty much the same everywhere. People take punches for granted unless we're talking about boxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you talk to most martial artists, you watch most martial arts conversations around self-defense, uh, street application, even competition, you rarely see people spending much time talking about or even acknowledging punches. And yet, if you watch combat sports, obviously boxing, but everything, if you watch any fight, if you get into a fight, Punches will be thrown. They are somehow unchanging, incredibly utilitarian, and ignored. All right. Much like ceiling fans. All right, last one. Kit Kats. My first instinct is to go for the slogan. Give me a break. Okay. All right. Um. Hmm. I'm reminded of the Mitch Hedberg joke. Kit Kats are great unless I'm with four or more people. Because <laughs> they're only four pieces. Four, yeah. Depending on if you get the mini minis. Mm. This is the hardest one. All right. There we go. 
This is the hardest one yet. It wasn't the last one on my list. I purpose I did like you rearrange. Go around. It's like I'm gonna ask this one last. I think the best thing I can I can go to on this is is more on the physics of the structure of a Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. Right. If you think about it, I'm assuming everybody out there knows what a Kit Kat looks like, right? Like you've got those kind of uh, four essentially long pyramids, but with the top taken off. So mm -hmm. it's flat. I don't know how many Kit Kats high you could stack before the weight at the top affects the bottom, but it'd be quite a few. They're, mm -hmm. they're quite rigid, quite strong. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, unless they've been in a hot car, breaking off a Kit Kat always feels like more requires more effort than it should. Right? They're durable. And that makes me think of stances. Okay. If I were to get you into a, a good front stance, maybe add a little bit of, uh, you know, toes in, a little mm -hmm. bit of, I don't know what the term would be in other martial arts, karate sun shin, mm -hmm. right? Like the toe in position. At almost every angle, I could lean my entire body weight on you or maybe a better illustration, vice versa. If I'm in that stance, you could lean your whole body weight on me at almost any angle, yeah. and I would not fall over. There might be a couple, maybe if you came in on this on this angle, I would I would move backwards. But most of it, mm -hmm. I'd be pretty darn solid. The toes in help that, mm -hmm. right? It's it's. We often underestimate how small decisions in our technique and our stance and our training can have tremendous impact and not just repeated over time, but that little detail, that nuance. And it's something that as advanced practitioners, we bump into once in a while. Somebody will say, try doing this and you do it in your life. Try relaxing this. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. Man, I wish I'd known that 20 years ago, right? Like those little things can have a huge impact on everything. What if a Kit Kat was not broken into those four pieces? What if it was one big piece with that same design? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would imagine it would dent. That you would have in the center, mm -hmm. given less force than our silly example of stacking a whole bunch of Kit Kats high or them getting tossed around because, let's face it, candy isn't handled with you know gentle hands. Yeah, yeah. You know, just it can't be you'd have damage to it. And when people open seemingly damaged candy, they become nervous that something has happened to them. They don't want to eat it. And that becomes problematic for the company. So turn your toes in sometimes. Yeah. I thought when you mentioned structure, I thought you were going to go where I was going to go, would have gone, which was Kit Kats are made up of layers. Mm. And when we learn things, Often we'll learn the first part, and then we'll learn the. I like that one a lot better. That's where I. That's where I would have gone. That's a lot better. <laughs> that's my last question. That was that my was last uh, word. I like Kit those. Kat. I like those. If you want to throw a word to Andrew, please do. Let help me stump Jeremy. Unstumpable. I'm not saying they're all good, <laughs> but I have not been stumped. Uh, you can email him, Andrew at WhistlekickMarshmallowsRadio.com. I am Jeremy at WhistlekickDotcom. Our social media is at Whistlekick. If you like what we do, please consider supporting us. No, just support us. Please support us. Don't please. consider it. Yeah. Consider it and then do it. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. Podcast15 at Whistlekick.com. You can make a donation, a one-time donation at WhistlekickMarshmallowsRadio.com. And you can check out the family page. Whistlekick.com slash family. Weekly updates, exclusives, discounts, and all the ways you can help us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. I appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Until then, train hard, smile, and have a great day. day.